I'm making the video. Okay, unit 5.2 test review. Um, 1, 2, and 3 you're solving. So we know that we're solving for x because that's my only letter. So I need to simplify both sides. This side's already simplified. This side's not. So I'm going to combine like terms. 5x plus 2x is 7x. Because they're on the same side, I keep the same sign. And then when I have a variable on both sides, I like to move my smallest variable first. So minus 3x, minus 3x, and I have negative 2 equals um, 4x plus 18. And then now I have to get my x by itself, so I need to do minus 18, minus 18, and I have negative 20 equals 4x. Lastly, I'm going to divide both sides by 4, and I get x equals negative 5. Um, we can plug it in and check our work on the test. So on the left side, we're going to plug in 5, so 3 times 5, oop, negative 5, minus 2 is what the left side equals. So when I plug it on this side, I should get the same thing. 5 parentheses negative 5 plus 18 plus 2 times negative 5 and I do so I did it correctly okay next one it's again same concept I'm gonna solve so I have to simplify both sides both sides need to be simplified this gives me 12x minus 2 this gives me 12x minus 2. Well, they're the same. And if you notice they're the same, you know that when I subtract 12x from both sides, they're both going to cancel and I get negative 2 equals negative 2. When all of my variables cancel, it is a special case. And this is true. Negative 2 does equal negative 2. So it's I M S for infinitely many solutions. Okay, number 3, same concept. 3x plus 6. Here I'm going to simplify. So 8x minus 5x is 3x plus 1. So right away I see my variables match. And they both cancel. I'm left with 6 equals 1, which is not true. That's false. So this one is no solution. Okay. Um, after solving an equation, you get this statement 0 equals 6. So after we solve, just like we just did, we get 0 equals 6. So there's no variables. So I know it's a special case, which is false. Um, so this tells you that there's no solution. Now if it said 4 equals 4, that would tell me IMS. Okay, look at number 5. It says the sum, it should say the sum of three consecutive, consecutive odd integers is 171. So I know I have three unknown consecutive odd numbers. And I know odd numbers are two apart. So my first unknown is x. And I know to get to my next odd number, I have to add 2, which gives me x plus 2. And to get to my next odd number, I have to do x plus 2 again, which gives me 2 plus 2, which is 4. And it says the sum of that is 171. So x plus x plus 2 plus x plus 4 equals 171. Okay, so knowing that I have x plus x plus x, which is 3x, and I have 2 plus 4, which is 6, equals 171. I'm going to do minus 6 minus 6. I get 3x equals 165. Divide both sides by 3. And I get 55. Now, I'm not done because it wants all three numbers. So I have x, which is 55, plus 2, which is 57, 55 plus 4, which is 59. OK. Um, a triangular garden has a perimeter of 47. Right away, I know I'm talking about a triangle. And it says one side is three feet longer than the shortest side, while another side is twice as long as the shortest side. Find the length of the shortest side. Well, we don't know the shortest side, so we're going to use x to represent what we don't know. Three feet longer is going to be plus three than the shortest side, which is x. So when I write that proper, I have x plus three. And then the other side is twice as long as the shortest side. Well, twice is two times, so two x. 
perimeter means I add all the sides, so x plus x plus 3 plus 2x equals 47 as my perimeter. x plus x is 2x plus 2 more x is 4x. Bring down my plus 3 equals 47. And now I solve. So minus 3, minus 3 because I move into the opposite side. Okay, divide both sides by 4. And I get x equals 11. Before I box that, I need to go back and read the question. It says find the length of the shortest side. x does represent my shortest side, so it is 11 feet. Okay. Um, here says what is 48% as a decimal? Well, 48, we move the decimal twice to the left, and it becomes 0.48. 5% as a decimal, move it twice to the left, and it becomes 0 0.05, or 0 0.05. Um, what is 0 0.01 as a percent? I'm going to move it to the right twice, and I get 1%. Move it to the right twice, and I get 34%. Now these, read them as you go. So it says the number 137.5 is means equals, now 125%, when I plug in percents, I have to turn them to decimal. So 1.25 of means multiply what number we don't know. So I'm going to divide both sides by 1.25 to get x by itself. And I see 137.5 divided by 1.25 x equals 110. Okay, so same concept here. 59.5 is what percent we don't know of 85, which means multiply. Divide both sides by 85. Now when it's asking for percent, I have to turn that decimal into a percent first. So I have 59.5 divided by 85, and I get x equals 0.7, turn it into a percent and I get 70%. Okay, the number 768 is 60% of what number? 768 is 60% as a decimal of multiply what number? Divide both sides by 0.6 or 0 0.60. This cancels and I get 768 divided by 0 0.6, which is 1,280. Okay, here we're talking about percents. It says the price of a small diamond ring was recently increased by 11%, so it's going to be adding something. If the ring originally cost $1,900, find the markup and the new price. Well, to find how much I'm marking it up, I'm going to take my original cost times 11%, because I have to find 11% of my original cost. 11% as a decimal is 0.11. So I know... is $209. So that is my markup, or my increase, whichever way you want to word it. That's half my answer, because it says find the markup and the new price. Well, to find my new price, I have to take my old price plus my markup. Now, if it's a discount here, I would subtract, but it said mark up. So my new price is $2,109. That's my new price. So there's my second answer. Okay, flip to the back. Now, I will give you the tables, not per problem, but you'll be able to see these. So just a reminder, this one is principal. I mean, not principal, sorry. I'm the good of P. Uh, investment. Um, rate times time equals distance. This is motion. And then kind times amount is mixture. Okay, so we know that. So if we read the first one, it says a chemist wishes to strengthen a mixture. Right away I know I'm doing mixture. So I'm going to just sketch my table. I don't draw all the pieces. And I need three rows. And I know that this one I always thicken. And this one. 
Okay, so knowing that, it says he was, wishes to strengthen a mixture that is 10% alcohol to one that is 40% alcohol. How much pure alcohol should be added to the 10%? Okay, well, right away I know I'm mixing pure and 10%. So therefore, I'm creating my 40%. So what I'm creating goes at the bottom. So it says, how much pure? Remember, pure is 100%. When I turn that into decimal, it's 1.0. Sorry, you could put it at the top. And it says, how much? So I don't know. So it should be added to 12 liters of 10%, so 0 0.10. Don't let that confuse you. One's 0.1, one's 1 1.0, or just one. And then I don't know the full amount because I don't know this, so it's just those added, so x plus 12. That's the hardest part, so now I multiply. So 0.1 times 12, or 0.10 times 12 is 1.2. 1 times x is 1x. Here I have to distribute, and I have 0.4 times x, which is 0.4x, and then 0.4 times 12 which is 4.8. And then remember, we set it at the same every single time. So top plus middle equals bottom. So 1.2 plus 1x equals 0.4x plus 4.8. I always like to move my smallest x first to solve. So I'm going to do minus 0.4x on both sides. Bring down my 1.2. That brings me positive 0.6x equals 4.8. And now that all my x's are on the left, I need to get rid of the 1.2, so minus 1.2, minus 1.2. And I have 0.6x equals 3.6. Divide both sides by 0.6. And I get x equals... Six. Now I go back and read my question. It says, how much pure alcohol should be added to 12 liters? So how much pure? This is pure, and it's X. So X is six. So six liters of pure. Okay, so let's look at number two. I mean, 16, sorry. It says, two cars leave an airport. Right away, I know it's cars moving. It's going to be motion. Rate times time equals distance. Okay. Remember, we don't ever plug anything in here. This is multiplying R times T. Okay. And then I use whatever distance it gives me to help solve. So it says two cars leave the airport and travel in opposite directions. So here's the airport. One's going, it doesn't tell me, but we'll say north, and one the other one's going south. One travels 35 miles an hour, and the other travels at 25. In how many hours will the two cars be 100 mile, uh, cars apart? I mean, 100 miles apart. Goodness gracious. So if here's a car and here's a car, we want to know when they're 100 miles apart. Um, because it doesn't specify two cars leave the airport, I'm assuming they left at the same time, so x and x. So my distance for this car is represented by 35x. My distance for this car is represented by 25x. So 25x. 35x, and so I know that the distance of this car plus the distance of this car, because they both start at the airport, should equal 100. So 25x plus 35 equals 100. Or you could say 35x plus 25x. It's going to be the same thing. So 25 plus 35 is 60. 60, sorry. Divide both sides by 60. And I get x equals... 1.6 uh, repeating. So I know that this one represents hours. So I have one hour. Oh, because freeze. It says how many hours. So I know I'm talking time. And both of my times are represented by x. And then I know that 0.6 all the way across the screen times my minutes of 60 minutes is 40 minutes. So one hour and 40 minutes. Remember, you multiply your decimal by 60, because there's 60 minutes in an hour, that says hour, not how, to figure out your minutes. Okay, let's look at number 17. How many liters of pure baking soda? Um, I know right away I'm talking about mixture, even though it doesn't say. So I have kind amount, 
kind times amount. Okay, so it says how many liters of pure baking soda, 100%, must be added to 200 liters of 30%. So I know I'm adding those, that's what's going to be at the top, to get a 60%. So I'm creating the 60%. So I'm using pure, which is 1, and then 30%, which is 0 0.30. And I'm using 200 liters of the 30%. And it says how many liters of pure, so we don't know. Here I add. Now I'm done filling in my table, and I multiply. So this is 1x. And that gives me 60. Here I have to distribute, so I get 0.6x. And then 0.6 times 200 is 120. And I set it up the same every time. Top plus middle equals bottom. So 1x plus 60 equals 0.6x plus 120. Move my smallest x first, minus 0.6x. That zeroes out. And I'm left with 0.4x. And you can always, if Decimals throw you off. Use your calculator. 0.4 plus 60 equals 120. So now I need to move the 60. So minus 60, minus 60, and I get 0.4x equals 60. Divide both sides by 0.4. And I get 150. Now I have to go back and read the question. How many liters of pure baking soda must be added to 200 liters? So I want to know how much pure, which is 150 liters. Now what if it asked me how much 60% did I create? You would come here, x plus 200, 150 plus 200 is 350. That would be your answer. Okay, make sure you're reading the question. Okay. Carolyn sold her car for 24000 She's asking for two separate payments, one long-term note and one short-term note. Don't let those words throw you off. If she earned this much, so this is principal, this is investment. So I know P times R times T is my investment, and I know that I just cut the first three apart. That stays my big one. Um, I stands for what I'm earning, my income. So this is one, two, four, zero. 1,240 interest annually. It tells me annually, and it doesn't say anything else about time, so time is one year. I know that she invested um, some of it at 4%, so 0 0.04, and some of it at 6%, so 0 0.06, and I don't know how that 24,000 is split. My first unknown is always X, and then remember, when I'm trying to find the remainder, I take your total minus X. The way we solve this is top row plus bottom row. Ooh, too soon. Minus x equals big box. So now I'm going to multiply. Well, 0 0.04 times 1 is 0 0.04, so this gives me 0 0.04x plus, well, 0 0.06 times 1, we can ignore the 6, or the 1, just kind of like here, and distribute. So 24,000 times 0 0.06, always double check how many zeros to, 24,000, I did it right, is 1440, negative 0 0.06, or sorry, 0 0.06 times negative x, negative 0 0.06x, and now I solve. So I know I have like terms. Do not do opposite signs. They are on the same side. 0 0.04 minus 0 0.06. So I get negative 0 0.02x. Okay, minus 1440. And I get negative 0 0.02x equals negative 200 and now I divide both sides by negative 0 0.02 and I get 10,000 so x equals 10,000 
but I'm not done. I have to go back and read my question. How much is invested in each note? So the 4% and the 6%. Well, X is $10,000. Do not forget to label at 4%. And then 24,000 minus X. So 24123 minus 10123 gives me 14,000. At 6%. One. Okay, two more. We're almost done. Two planes leave BWI and travel in opposite directions. When you see that, it's just a certain airport. So we have airport. We have two planes that go opposite directions. So again, we'll just claim north and south. So right away we know this is motion rate times time equals distance. So it tells me one travels 350 miles per hour and the other one at 325. In how many hours will the two planes be 1,800 miles apart? So we want to know when this plane and this plane are 1,800. So it's going to be set up just like the other one. And I don't know time, so we're going to assume it's the same. Okay, so I know that my two distances equals my total distance. So we have 350x plus 325x equals 1,800. And when I combine those, math is not mathing in my head, uh, 675, yeah. 675x divided by 675, I get x equals... 2.6 repeating. So right away, I know two hours. And 0.6 repeating, we already found up here at number 16. 0.6 repeating was 40 minutes. So and 40 minutes. And remember, it's because we take our 0.6 times 60. Now 0.6 repeating, if you just do 0.6, it's not going to be the same. 0.6 all the way across the screen times, not 600, sorry, 60 minutes is 40. Last one. This one was weird, but I did help you all in class um, because you had to figure out how much she was investing first. And so Lisa won, sorry, my English is terrible, $200,000 in the state lottery. She paid first uh, income tax first of 30% on the winnings. So 30% of my winnings. So 200,000 times 30%. So she paid $60,000 in taxes before she could invest anything. So this is investment. Okay, so I have to take that uh, 60000 out, so 200000 minus 60000 um, You won't have like a two for a problem like this in your on your test. gives you this. So that's how much my total investment is. So it says, um, so she invests some of it at 1.5. So we don't know how much at 0 0.015, because we have to move that twice. And then some more at 4, she, the rest at 4, so 0 0.04. And I know my total invested was this. Okay, time doesn't, sp it says per year, so how much did she invest each rate? So time is time. And she earned 4,250. 4, so again, we multiply the top. Plus the bottom. Equals our big box. Point, this just gives me 0.015x plus, I'm going to distribute, so 140,000 times 0.04, it's 5,600, minus 0.04x, because one times ago, you remember, we can ignore those, equals 4250, combine my like terms. And I get 
negative 0.025x. Subtract. I get negative 0.025x equals negative 1350. So I'm going to divide both sides Oops, by negative 0.025. And I get x equals 54,000. Now I have to go back and read my question. How much did she invest at each rate? So I'm at 1.5%. She invested 54,000. And then 140,000 minus 54,000 at, so 86,000. at 4%. Okay, good luck on your test. Turn in your review tomorrow.